<laughs> That's a pretty <laughs> cute one. That's a fun one. But yeah, thanks all our thanks to all our viewers for your interest in these massive sponges. It's a pretty um, unique aspect of this dive we've done so far. This one. This one was super. They were just talking about Upashana's amazing sketchbook, I believe, that we're going to release amazing. photos of soon, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> what do you think? That is not there, so? amazing. That's just me randomly sketching yeah. the things we see. Yeah, what do you think? Another 10 or 20 there? Yeah, we want to put out a lot out here behind us because this is the cliff face here. So if it's out here, we can drop down and come down along south along the cliff where all the sponges were. Well, we are. We're going to put Atlanta out here behind her, and then we're going to go to the south. Uh, let's try 10 and see what happens. I think 20 might be too far away, but... Roger. I think it's still swinging a little bit, so... I can always uh, offset a little because the current's from behind us, obviously. You can see it blowing the tether over the top of Herc. So I'll probably offset. But well, if we have Adeline out in the deep water, we can drop down that cliff face. And we have another sponge question. Are sponges a single animal or kind of a colonial animal like corals? What would you say? They're colonial. Yeah, because yeah. they have a lot of different kinds of cells working together yes. to make them function. Some of them um, called coanocytes, I believe. Mm -hmm. They uh, move water through the sponge for them to filter feed. Some of them are focused on making spicules, those glass shards, basically, that we were talking about that give them structure. Some of them, I believe, are undifferentiated, meaning they are not sure what they're going to become or what their job is going to be, but um, they're going to develop into some kind of cell specialized to do something. So um, they're kind of like an interesting uh, col colony of different cells. Yeah, and also uh, their water filter system changes between the group of sponges. It becomes more complex, and it is more complex in the glass sponges. The demo sponges and interesting biology. Yeah, I had a, one of my former supervisors was a really big fan okay. of sponges. <laughs> That's great. And um, I created a little sponge character sticker, and yeah. now it's like all over uh, that nonprofit's like it's like freebies and web on their web page. It was printed onto, I printed it onto like a baby um, onesie for oh. her baby. <laughs> yeah, can, That's uh, interesting. Do 20 yeah. south. Isn't no, it just amazing to see all these uh, polyopogon sponges? I've yeah. never seen so many so of them. So many, right? Out. That's awesome. And we have a yellow bolisoma. Come down for me. 
some Christ so gorgeous think the is there something yellow or am I seeing things? It's kind of yellowish, right? Yeah. Is this something or just coloration of the rock? I can push in there real quick. Oh, it's just coloration of the rock. Sorry. Okay, go in. Thank you. There's so many chrysogorgias. Uh, look up a bit for me with the camera. Perfect fix. Yeah, this sponge, right? It looks like it's <laughs> a smiley cartoon. <laughs> Comes out on another five. Yeah. Down five, Jacob. The small ones, I am not sure. They can be. I mean, I don't know how they look when they are smaller. We have a comment from Trip Middle School in Maine. Thanks for tuning in. Um, the beams of light or lasers are used to get, give us a sense of scale. The two dots are 10 centimeters apart. So that way we can tell how large these rocks, sponges, and other um, creatures and geological formations are. That's a great view from Atalanta, too. Wow, yeah, the all the sponges. I've the been looking at that this, yeah, the whole time. It's kind of just... Yeah, the, the navigation near this much steeper wall in this current, of course, is, you know, no easy business. It really looks like what you said, Upashana, like Hercules is the conductor and the sponges are the orchestra. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Looks like the mushrooms that grow in my yard after it rains heavy and they'll cut my grass. Oh, you them? No. <laughs> I think in general it's good to not just eat mushrooms. You're not sure what they are. <laughs> <laughs> mushroom hunting in Oregon is a thing. Oh, yeah. Have you been mushroom hunting before, Dan? Yeah. Whoa. What do you look for? Mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, more specifically, uh, like truffles. I don't know different mushroom types. I don't know. There I go. <laughs> People who know what they're looking at. Uh, <laughs> kind of like uh, driving an ROV. <laughs> We have an interesting question. What is the land equivalent of a sponge? I don't really think we have filter feeders on land because it's, there's no medium from, for them to filter feed. The closest thing I can think of is like a spider that catches insects in the air, but really yeah. we don't really have an equivalent. No. Yeah. But that's a very interesting thought. Thanks for sharing that. And then maybe for our Hawaii friends um, in our watch, someone's asking about a large organism off the coast of Maui. Um, scientists said the organism was thousands of years old, but they can't recall what it was. Do, are you familiar with anything like that? Jake and I both it's just looked at each other writer. and shrug, shrugged our shoulders. I've never heard about that. A big organism off of Maui. Uh, Molokai? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sure there are some old corals. Yeah, there's a big shelf over there. Thank you. 
In American Samoa, there's a coral called Big Mama that's like... I know what you're talking about. We mapped it. Uh, actually, we good for uh, good for another 20 south, please. Yeah, see if we can American keep, Samoa uh, has some wild corals. That'll have to off the wall here and move along the wall for a while. Zoom on that one. Uh, go ahead, Jenna. Zoom in. Another one of our prognoids. Taylor, what do you say? I think so. Yeah, I think it's one of our prognoid plants that we have been seeing. Can you hear? Yeah, interesting that all of the brittle star associates are on that yeah. one side. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it better now? Yep. Okay, good. Yeah, I think that God, we are seeing uh, chrysogorgias, those planar chrysogorgias. I think one of them were collected as well earlier. But yeah, this looks like a nice prognoid. Probably the genus Narella. I'm not sure how exactly the different variations of the genus, but I think this is what it looked like when we were checking last time. So I have a question that I've seen a few times. Do you see some of the little specks coming off? Yeah. Are those part of... No, probably not. I think those are maybe small mice or something that's So it's not like floating. Pro propagating... No, I don't think so. Yeah, if you can look at that, it looks like they're swimming around. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so like an amphipod or a oh, small, small shrimp. Yeah. Look, because look, they're not look. like floating away from the coral. That's great. Thank you so much. Okay. I think there's a things. there's a teeny little squat lobster on there. Oh, uh, it can be on the uh, chrysogorgias. They're mostly associated with. Uh, most of the times they're associated with uh, squat lobsters of the genus. I know the name of, but every time I have to look up. Look at uh, Eurotychus altitude. Hmm. Which one is it? <laughs> Dealer's choice. That looks different, right? The yellow. Uh, can we have there a quick go. zoom on this one? Sure. Thank you. Let's go deep. Craig, push in there. What? Oh, it's one of the uh, bamboo coral fans that we have been seeing for a while. I'm not sure what kind though. We had some guests. It has a nodal branching that we can see. Slightly yellowish color to the uh, colony. They're branching from the base. You can get like a nice uh, texture view in, on the porch cam. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, I have to lower the screen so that I can always see that. Yeah, so that is beautiful. Good. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Just a little for me. Roger. Okay, you can go wide. Yeah. Not sure what time zone you're in if you're watching with us, but here on the ship it's 3 a.m. Yes. Well, one more hour in our watch. Yeah, we have been seeing that kind of uh, bamboo coral fan, uh, quite a few of them on this type, but uh, we are not sure what it is. Uh, Particularly, we have a couple of guesses, but that's why I, let's see if somebody in the chat can help us with an ID. You know how we were seeing all these sponges together and then earlier, like, all this stuff on one side of a really large boulder? Yes. It made me kind of think of um, gregarious settlement. Yes. So yeah. um, if you're unfamiliar with that term, for our viewers, basically, um, we'll drop down gregarious settlement is basically when animals uh, decide to grow in the same space together. So we see that in mussels. Um, there have been studies that have seen that in uh Barnacles and crabs. Down five, please. Yeah. Because a lot of them start off as plankton, so they're just floating little tiny um, animals that often you need a microscope to see. And the idea is that if they choose a spot next to another established adult of its same species, that spot might be a good spot where, you know, Down there's five. enough food or. The conditions are often correct, so it's kind of interesting. They are able to detect whether there's adults in the area, often from chemicals in the water, and then they decide to settle in the same place together. Yeah, it's really interesting. I think also we saw a smaller uh, a s bamboo coral fan of the same kind and a small corallid recruit, which is too small to know whether what kind it was. I can get closer. I'm five meters away there. And we are, there are still some chrysogorgias on the slope. Oh, there's a squat lobster. It's, uh, again, the Pleurogorgia in the family Chrysogorgiaid. The white, uh, smaller colony, that would be the Pleurogorgia, and then we have the Chrysogorgias. I also have to learn what is the difference between, how to differentiate between a Chrysogorgia and a Pseudochrysogorgia. I think the name probably implies it's not as easy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because, yeah, when I hear pseudo, yeah. I'm like, it's an imposter. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. It's quite a wall. It is. In response to your 3 a.m. comment, we got a we got a viewer that would like to say, "Hi, Team Caffeine." Should we <laughs> rename ourselves from Dead Man's Watch to Team Caffeine? Uh, caffeine lasts only so long. <laughs> and then we need to go to sleep after. So yeah, yeah. You yeah. have so much caffeine when you got to sit in one spot for four hours. Yeah, <laughs> I've definitely been using caffeine to help though, but usually in the mornings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, a lot of us are not there for the, the, the breakfast in the galley. Right. Oh, yeah. After this no. watch, we'll sleep right <laughs> through that. Um, I'm really hungry. I think this is the hungriest I've been during the watch. <laughs> Same, and so I ate a sandwich before. It's back, to the dim, cookie time. back to the dim sum topic. <laughs> <laughs> May, May sum is a good place. What is it called? May sum. May Sum in Chinatown. Or okay. Yungi Dim Sum in uh, Alamoana. But well, if you want to uh, continue down, or we could uh, come back up. A couple of nice Bolisoma sponges in the neon green color. It's, it's going to keep going down, so at some point we're going to need to go up. That's going to go up. It's like 90 meters. Yeah, we need to go up, I think. What's that? I think we should uh, yeah, go we up. Yeah, we'll need to go up, yeah. If we uh, keep going down, I'll have to step to the west again. But yeah. It's starting to come yeah. in. It's like a good spot to go back up here. You can look to your right a little. And this looks like a good spot. There's some geology action here. I know. That's really... I don't know how to describe that. Geology action is the way that's. <laughs> it's almost like steps, but it's it's not. It's a little uh, promontory here. So. Wow. Look how steep it is. You can tell how steep it is on my on Atalanta camera. It's wild. Wow. Look and yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. the return on the the near the danger zone. Oh yeah. That Look is the, interesting. Is this a dike? You know, that that's what comes to my mind, but I'm not a geologist. <laughs> You're the geologist for our award, so it is a dike <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the dikes are the internal plumbing, the internal channels of magma within the seamount. And when things collapse, you know, you can see inside yeah, coming up now, you the ancient seamount. Yeah, should get you, bring you away from it. When we see pillars like that that have different uh, weathering different structure you know inside these these huge flows it, it, it makes me think we're looking at an internal structure of the seamount but again I'm not um, not a geologist yeah this is a very interesting feature and what is baffling is how the corals are rising uh, have grown uh, perpendicular to yeah. this structure I just saw that on the right yeah I, m I missed that. Yeah, so they're basically perpendicular to the f this rock face, and at one point they were extending on either side. And uh, we mm -hmm. can see a bunch of uh, several colonies of uh, Pleurogorgia. There were some of those bamboo coral fans, and some bamboo whips, probably lepidises. Uh, we are not seeing so many of these those polyopogon sponges because I believe that okay, because of their dimensions, yeah, yeah. Tuck, it is tuck, difficult tuck, for tuck, them yeah. to grow at a uh, 90 degree angle like this to the surface and also parallel to the base. Uh, but we are definitely seeing more of the uh, octocoral fans. Uh, 2240, please. Yes, please. Some chrysogorgias as well. Hmm. Maybe around here, do you think? We'll no, let's wait for Niskin. Um, yeah, I would wait. We haven't like passed. Saying, yeah, yeah. Wait point seven months. I just looked at that and that's when I stopped. Yeah. I can see why you would think that, though, with mm -hmm. this change. Yeah. But I guess it's not very high diversity. No, it's not. It's different, but not different, high, yeah. yeah. But yes, I said that and I looked at the high pack and I realized that I realized our position with respect to the ship. Yeah, there's a, there's a small anthomastis, a pseudo-anthomastis. I can see a blob of red. Uh, uh, that is a big sponge. It's <laughs> one of the ferrades, I would believe. The... Processing. I think it actually is a different. Um, I was looking it's through. Different? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me see if I can find it again. Um, There's a crinoid on a small bamboo coral whip. Nice coloration.
Well, we're going to step around the corner. There's enough. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it is this. Ooh, uh, wall. Skeptrolophora. Okay. Skeptrolophora. Okay. One of these. Yeah. Yes, the bottom. The second one. From this one? No. The one after that. Yes, that looks kind of. Those crinoids tend to do that, don't they? They, they like those whips. Mm -hmm. I think it's easier for them to grip on. Mm. We have some primnoids, chrysogorgias. Where? I can't see the fish. Oh, yeah, I see something moving. You're right. Do you see it? No. Here. Yeah. Like there's something yeah. moving there. Oh yeah. With a lighter colored it looks head. Not long it does not look elongated. Yeah. Yeah, that looks. I think sponges can be different. Yep. What was the what was the family of that? Or the the one that you uh, I did it as. Yeah. Tretoplura. Wait. Thank you. We're coming up? No. Nope. Uh, can you move another 10 270, please? 10 270. Uh, is that right? Oh, hold on, hold on. That uh, oh, should be right. Yeah, I think that's right. Yep, 270, 10 270. <coughs> now we're going to step around the corner here. Okay, thanks. You can uh, zoom in there while you're waiting for the ship to move. That falls in, is it? What is that? Huh? Is it a squat lobster that we are seeing from the underneath? Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. And it's amazing how the. Does it also have hydrates growing yeah, on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It is like. Hi oh, the, the squat lobster. On its legs? I am like not sure. Maybe. Yeah, something is on their legs. Yeah. This is not good personal hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> There's um, definitely hydroids growing on the bamboo coral. Yeah. A lot of them. And yeah, sometimes they can have hydroids yeah, even growing on their antennae, on it looks yeah. like there. Probably it hasn't molted in a long time. Mm. Uh, and it's nearing its molting stage. Meters. Just a couple of meters. And if you're not familiar with with the term molting, basically um, animals like this that have a hard exterior, exterior exoskeleton 
um, when, as they grow larger, they have to um, also grow their exoskeleton larger. So molting is the process where they kind of exit their older, smaller exoskeleton. They come out and then they're a little soft and squishy at that point and then it hardens into a larger exoskeleton. It's a killer picture and it just looks like Perk is just perched. Cliff parking. But you're in a tight spot. Hercules uh free solo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll take another 10, best place. There are tiny mice shrimps swimming around. Right. Okay, can go wide, thanks. Am I going to hit that wall right there? No. Should I come up? I wonder if that fish is still hiding in there. You're 10 meters away from it. Right here. Hopefully getting further away. If I in theory. If we move the ship in the right direction. I think we did. Should be going that way, right? <laughs> Want to help me out here? I mean, we are going that way. Roger. We see another uh, Antelastus, a pseudo Antelastus. Mm. The view like from this, Atlanta so. is also very beautiful. So, this would be another one of those sponges that you I did tetrapleura right tetrapleura how about that Niskin now Ooh. are these two uh, not diverse enough I think we're waiting on the Niskin is that right Taylor Ann yeah, we only have three left. Um, and how many? There are 14 waypoints. I guess we might not make it through all of them. Yeah, 13 we might not make all of them, but... Um, we're, and we're skipping... Uh, hold on. So, in the notes it said... Uh, go straight to waypoint 11 after 9. So we're skipping waypoint 10. And we're skipping waypoint 12. Okay. We're just going to be driving through, basically. Also, we haven't taken a background, so that might actually limit us to two more Niskins. Okay. But I'm yeah, not let's, sure. Let's wait yeah. on the Niskin. Oh, yeah, a sea star. Yeah. And a crinoid. And change in geology, too. What's going on there? For sure. Oh, uh, so these ones are related to the ferrets sponges because I think I'll have to open one of them. That is why they look this similar. So they're in the same order as the ferrets. A bamboo right up here. Yeah, that is a bamboo coral with a crinoid. This beautiful coloration, dark red, and how do they come up with these patterns? It's 
funny the uh, diversity change with the geology change there. Yeah, it's so drastic. We have a Ritogorgia, a Chrysogorgia, what looks like a primnoid and a small coralliid recruit. Uh, we've discussed that before, why that is some animals like these kind of rocks and some like the slick kind of rocks. Yeah. When you say slick, do you mean smooth? Yeah, if you uh, here, go back to my left here. kind of black, shiny, or smooth. Uh. Yeah. That's all the, uh, whatever the white ones are. Yeah. The uh, little bushy ones. And then it changes. Uh, right behind you. Roger. Yeah, yeah. As we walk around the corner here, it's all the. It's my scientific, scientific observation for the day. Not very scientific, I know, but what can I say? It's still an observation. And we're on a science chat, so it counts. turns one oh yeah 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 and um we're seeing now uh an iridogorgia more of the bamboo coral fans and some, I think they were called of figure sponges. And another of the pleurogorges, and yeah, exactly, you, like we, we were discussing the diversity changes with the mm -hmm. surface, the geology, the direction and the part of a structure that we are seeing. I wonder if the porosity of the rock surface has, you know, they, some, some yeah. stick better than others when they land. So. Uh, that is absolutely logical. That can have a great effect, but the, I am not sure if people have studied that, but uh, we know so little about many of the mechanisms of how these corals attach to their surfaces that it's still a long way before we can have so, uh, we can have comprehensive answers but that definitely would matter because each of these groups have different uh, mechanisms of uh, attaching themselves to the surfaces and also they are basically at a 90 degree angle to the vertical wall yeah. How big are they when they're polyps took away? Is it microscopic? Or? Yes, yes. And I think the pla the the fan and structure nice helps in uh, keeping their position because it increases the surface area and reduces the 
pressure on the all over the entire colony whereas for a sponge because it doesn't have those branches and spaces in between the pressure on each point would be much the pressure on the overall sponge would be much higher I uh, did a project once, and this is not deep water, but again, shallow water with yeah. some snail larvae. So yeah. snails also like corals, they have a microscopic larvae stage. And once the snails are ready to go through metamorphosis and turn into, um, from the swimming little babies into like adult snails crawling around, we put a bunch of them in um, cups with different substrates and mm -hmm. textures as well. Yeah. And they were totally um, like, the ones in certain sub above certain substrates would settle faster than others. So yes. I think that yeah. it's amazing the sensory capabilities they have for something like texture as well and de deciding like, okay, so now it's jelly. time to attach or, or not. Yeah, and I think they have done similar studies on shallow water coral recru recruitment as well. Mm -hmm. uh, right, yeah. We just, it's hard to study deep <laughs> sea coral recruitment. But then right. again, the I mean, they definitely have preferences. Right. Yes. Yeah. But how those preferences work in the deep sea, we I don't think we know enough about that. Yeah. Um, because the surfaces, the textures, the geology are very yeah. different when it right. comes to shallow. But it but might play a factor. Oh yeah, they definitely do. I was just looking up if because uh, we're talking about the the rocks that mm -hmm. were darker and smoother and versus the the other ones. Yeah. So I know like obsidian is igneous. I don't know if there's like a version of yeah. that underwater. I don't yeah. think it can form. I tried to look it up briefly and I I need to pay attention to what's going on so I can't read all the articles, but um, I think that's a question we'll ask the geologists. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's do another 240, please. Uh, move us away from the wall just a little bit. 240, 10 or 20? Mm, 10 meters should do it. Well, just about 30 minutes left in our watch. Have a time to head back up to the ridge, you think? Yeah, we're coming up now. Roger, thanks. It's been a great plunge down this side of the wall. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, front row, for all your uh, amazing maneuvering and navigating and the really great zooms and shots. It's really cool to see. Yeah, and also just agreeing to all the adventures and <laughs> ideas we throw out from the back row. I was pretty... Like, let's look at yeah. this, let's look at that. 
I felt like those glass sponges were like a oh, siren okay. song, mm -hmm. calling <laughs> us to go <laughs> over the ridge. I'm telling you, it's an orchestra of the sponges, and they're also called elephant ear sponges, so <laughs> they have musical ears. Silent they have an sponges. ear for music. But that also makes me hungry because there's a fair food called elephant ears that's just Ooh. like fried dough with cinnamon and sugar. Oh. Like a funnel cake? I'm also very, <laughs> very hungry at this point. Come back around yeah. here to the dike. That, yeah, that's probably the primnoid. Probably the genus Nadella. From the guide, that is what it looks like. Also, oh, can you hear me? Uh, look left just a little for me. Oh, right yeah, up, just a little me? more on the cliff. Roger. Roger. More dramatic. More dramatic. Uh, yeah, look down this. Little. We'll keep her in view there as we come up. So. Yeah, it looks like some of the other watches explored the other side of the bridge. Oh, yeah? Wow. But I think we're the only ones that went down this side. Just looking at the track lines. Oh, yeah, it looks kind of almost like a zigzag in some areas. It looks like a step, right? At some points it's with the blocks. Yeah, I think that's just the way things weather and fracture. Yeah. They can do that in a very, you know, symmetrical pattern and it's in 90 degree angles or hexagons even. And, uh, you know, there have been hexa hexagonal pillars that have weathered out that are called different things. I think there are some in the British Isles. Yes, yes, them, right. Uh, you know, different names and there are shapes under the water. I think there was a kind of a theory about the Bimini Road. Folks thought it was mm -hmm. some kind of road underwater, but it's much more natural fracturing and pattern. Yeah. Yes, that's a black talent. It's a beautiful Iridogorgia, our Elsie's favorite octocoral. And Elsie is sitting in the data logger seat. She's doing wonderful. Ooh, Very proud. <laughs> Elsie, Elsa, you're doing everything now. A little bit of everything <laughs> on this ship. You're back on the stern deck, bringing the Atalanta in. Do you want to sit in the nav seat? Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm doing the jobs where I have like a little bit of knowledge of them, but not a lot. <laughs> you know, you the, the, the same right. jack of all trades, but master of none. <laughs> nah, nah. No, you're, you're that's just, not true. You're just testing the waters. Yeah. It's great to see you out there on you're the You're learning deck. new things. Thanks, Dan. Hopefully I don't mess up too bad. I mean, the ROV's gonna get on deck every time, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's the hardest part. Well, one of them, get them. It's lots them of chrysogorgias. Awesome. There's some stock that's being overgrown by a bunch of hydroids. And bamboo coral colonies. Is there a particular thing you've done that has been your favorite or more most interesting so far on the ship, Elsie? You've got like a sampler of 
Nautilus, of the EV Nautilus. Um, I mean, it's hard to say. I think they're all... Uh, 10 meters, 135. Sorry. 10 meters, 135. Yes. Sorry, guys. We're getting a little far away here. I don't want to get pulled off. No worries. We can uh, take a pause on the chat, too, if that's helpful. No, we're good. Okay. Thanks for letting us know. And I'll say if you're too busy to answer a question while you are doing data logging, that's uh, no worries, too. Yeah, it can be a lot uh, of multitasking, for, especially when you're learning. Um, but you're doing great. Come down, please. We don't need the big delta anymore. We're far enough away from each other. Yeah, we are uh, going over several of the big bamboo coral fans and Chrysogorgias, some bamboo coral webs as well. We saw a few uh, Plurogorgias, right? Yeah, we did. And now we're starting to see an increase in the size of these corals too, which is yeah, kind of what I guess I would expect to see as we get up higher in the water column. You can also Not see the little promontory and the sonar there, so it's sticking out yes, a bit. Yes, these are bamboo the cliff. Yeah. yeah, we could probably advise the, the dog watch to do a niskin maybe around waypoint eight or when they see yeah. concentrations further up. That's that's right. That would be a good suggestion to them. This is a small shrimp that's swimming by the uh, bamboo coral fan. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming closer. Hi, shrimp. Hi, shrimp. Shrimpy. <laughs> I still find it interesting, the colors, mm -hmm. palette you see down here, lots of pinks, and reds, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of purple. Mm -hmm. And interestingly that uh, polychaete uh, that we saw on the sea star today, those were greens and yeah. those were iridescent greens. Oh, they yeah. looked like boogers. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I'm sorry I had to say it. <laughs> and, yeah, there's been a few. A few antomasters. Okay, we can do uh, let's 
do another 10. One, two, hey, five. yeah. We're back to the yeah, garden. Cool, yeah, pull <laughs> back to sponge yeah. land. Amazing how the first one we see one, is three, also five. just massive. <laughs> yeah. And then with the colors, Upashana, when the corals bioluminesce, mm -hmm. um, what kind of hue is that? Is it more of a bluish? Because I believe, remember, like bluish, whitish is common and yellow is rare. The thing is, I have never seen that. Oh. I have read about it. Uh, gotcha. uh, if I remember correctly, I think they are bluish, but I will have to check because mm. I have never witnessed that. Cup corals, I'm not sure yet. That's huge. That is huge. Down five. Definitely, I would say a meter wide. Yeah, quite an exclusive community. Yeah. I mean, they're all of this certain age, it seems. Uh, we yes. haven't seen small ones. Yes. I think we saw some that were slightly smaller, but not significantly smaller. So is that the planar chrysogorgia right there that we collected earlier? I did not Next see which the one they collected, but I think it okay. is the... Yeah, it's right, uh, right next to the... The Chrysogorgia, wait, I'll yes, tell okay. you, it's in the there chat. Me, please, Chrysogorgia crisis, crises. It's in the... Is there some, yes, there's something. Okay, yes, uh, something red. Probably small um, ring and enemies. Okay, go in, thanks. So this is probably a stupid question, but is there a way to date? things like these sponges, like trees, you can count the rings. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there are certain ways of dating. I don't know about the sponges. I know there are ways of dating the corals. Uh, some ways, which has worked for certain groups of corals, but it's difficult for some of the other groups of corals. Uh, sponges, I'll look that up. I exactly don't know how they age it. Uh, probably by size, I, I don't know. We've I will look that, that up. That's a good question, actually. We've had that uh, many times, and the answer I've always heard is um, the only way they can really tell is like they date uh, a shipwreck. Yeah, the with uh, ice, yeah. Some sub subsea structure that's man made that's been put down, and the sponges grow on it. I, I know you can do uh, isotope studies on these. Uh, sponges, like these tissues, and that can give you a approximate rough estimate of the age. But I don't know if there are other ways, if there are ways and methods other than doing isotope studies. I um, just looked it up, and it looks like they are able to use radiocarbon dating mm -hmm. of several um, sponge specimens. Um, and then there's a whole process of heating them and combustion, and um, then they're able to look at those spicules some more and the proteinaceous material. And for this sponge in particular, they found it was 440 years old, so. The elephant ear sponges? No, this is like oh, a, different, a different one. But it is for a deep sea sponge. Good. Good. The, yeah. So this article is a simple radio. <laughs> a simple radiocarbon dating method for determining the age and growth rate of deep sea sponges. Yeah. I know that the uh, diameter for the coral skeletons have been used. Uh, there are several other ways, and obviously isotope studies, but I wish we had easier methods than isotope studies. Okay, let's try 20 south, please. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Should take us along the ridge top here. Mm hmm Yeah.
can you uh, rehome that DVL for us? That fan kind of looks different a bit. Looks more branched. Can we have a quick zoom on this fan? Sure. Thank you. That can be a... The one on the right, that is the bamboo coral fan. The more yellowish one. Go ahead, yeah. And the whip is bamboo coral. That's the planar chrysogorgia. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's, it's just very yeah. Back. yeah. It has a very dainty and fine skeleton. I would polyps. say one of the planar chrysogorgia. in your way? <laughs> 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 Sorry, I'm coming around a bit. Down five, please. I think there was an anime or something. Uh, go wide. I I backed way up. I have to come around. See if I got enough leash to come around here. Mm. Well, I think it's been a great watch. You should yeah. Down five. We saw diversity of the undersea topography. Come mm -hmm. down another five, four. Roger. I, I hope we collected an interesting rock for Val. Yeah. And we had a great plunge down a vertical wall and to the depths, thanks to the front row. And then I, I really enjoyed the polyopagon. Yes. <laughs> yes. Garden yes. of giant polyopagons was fantastic. Any other final thoughts? It's been a special Down place. Homework. It's a sacred place. Right. It's been a wonderful view. Yes, yes. It has been a very interesting uh, dive actually seeing the... Uh, yeah. So yes, okay, before that, this ahead. is the planar... Cri this is a planar chrysogorgiad. Planar chrysogorgia. And this has been collected uh, during Sebastian's... Uh, during Kukui's watch. And I think there's a ring, there's a small anemone on it, one of its branches. Uh, and Saka pointed out that it has been corrected. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. okay. And Thanks yeah, it work. has been really interesting, in, uh, especially in seeing the change in diversity with uh, change of the rock faces, the directions we are moving, the kind of uh, geological structure the organisms are growing on. Overall, we have seen quite a large diversity. Maybe the density wasn't really high, but we are also comparing to some of the seamounts that had a very high diversity. So yes, this as usual has been very exciting and it's almost time for our watch change in yep. the next five, 10 minutes. Yep, any others, final thoughts? Just thank you for our viewers tuning in and sharing your love her sponges um, always amazed to see our global audience from switzerland spain finland hungary israel italy norway philippines germany australia canada the uk and um, netherlands and the u.s uh, thank you for tuning in and exploring with us video swap all right see ya <laughs> thank you jana Thank you. And I'm going to hop off uh, a little early to go call into a classroom as well. So um, thank you, everyone, and have a good night. And um, we'll see you next time. Thank, thank you, you so Thanks, much, Carol. Carol. Yeah, we're starting our watch change. Thank you, front row, for a great dive. And My pleasure. thank it's you, middle Dan. watch, dead man's watch, <laughs> for another good one.
Thank you, Hans, for your geological insights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Hans. And a budding sponge specialist. Yes. Just on the polyopagon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's another coralliid. Yeah, it almost looks like a heart. <laughs> yeah. Heart-shaped. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that, Hans. One more for you before yeah. you go. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Painted orange, put on some cheese dust. We'll, we'll be good. Sounds like they need to restock the Cheetos. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know there were Cheetos. What? Yeah, it was like I the very beginning of yeah. the expedition. Yeah. Yeah. I try to avoid them usually. Please don't. <laughs> Well, just like they used to do on the old soap operas. Now playing the role of Jaina, Ed <laughs> McNichol. That's nice. <laughs> I hate it when they did that on the Young and the Restless. <laughs> oh, man, that was my wife's jam, the Young and the Rest of Us. <laughs> the Rest of Us. <laughs> Zoom in, Jaina. Coming in. <laughs> <laughs> As high as it goes. Don't ask for I don't anymore. believe it. Wow. I'm going to get Jaina how to teach you how to zoom and focus at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. That is a beautiful zoom. On you a can leave it zoomed in. We're going to stay here for a watch, Jaina. It's one of her best. <laughs> one of her best. I'll go all the way in and I'll make it even more. Oh, look at that. Oh, yes. See the details of each polyp. Then I'll rack to the ones in the back. And then forward. Uh, front row saying off. Thank you, everyone. All right, see you, Dana. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you so much, Dan. <laughs> Come wide. Full, full wide.
two green at thirty eight nine forty one two three four CC one CC two rec one audio side tone thirteen clear Set one, set two, set three, recorder one, two, three, four, check, check. Sweet. Salvos are good. Each rack's good. System health is good. Timer, one hour. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Miss Tori. Good morning. Good morning. Normally, I wake up a little bit before my alarm, but I was sound asleep. And I was mm -hmm. like, what is that noise? <laughs> now I'm awake, kind of. <laughs> oh, this is like, yeah, this, we, we're getting some really cool geology here. Um, so Hans was giving me a, an update. Um, they found like a uh, sponge garden. Uh, they found like a vertical wall. Um, they took, uh, apparently the slurp has an issue, so we'll not be doing that. The front bio box is full. Um, Sebastian, uh, what do we have? How many slots in the starboard bio box do we have? We have a No. We have two C and D. Um, we could try flushing the slurp again when we, if we do want to take a slurp sample and see yeah. what happens. But all right, so so we should just keep that in mind. Um, we uh, uh, the dive is gonna we're coming back on deck around eleven. Uh, so the next watch will be trying to probably coming up around nine thirty. So we have pretty much have two slots left that if needed, can be filled uh, mostly during our watch. So keep that in mind. Um, yeah, cool. So it looks like we're, com we're coming, moving south, coming up slope still on our way to waypoint eight. And it, after waypoint eight, it looks like the geog geography and geology um, kind of widen out into more of a summit, uh, which is kind of cool. So there's a ridge line that they initially went up, wanted to go up, but then when we remapped it, um, they decided that they wanted to move that uh, over to the east, so we're going to go a different way to a different waypoint tent. There's more of a rise there. And uh, yeah, that's looking really cool. From look, the uh, from oh. the, the, the zoomed out version of the seamount on the map, it didn't look like we were going to be getting anything like this, but that's, uh, that's cool to see. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, it's like, I was just saying, it looks a little bit like a shoulder, so we could see a higher density. Yeah. There. Uh, once you get, yeah. Like waypoint nine area. Yeah. Yeah. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so in terms of navigation, would you guys kind of like to try to walk along the edge at the top of this cliff or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as, as close as possible. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, Yeah, we can kind of do the west side as we have been doing, if if able. Okay. What was the uh, issue with the slurp jar? Did something get stuck? A yes. Okay. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, they tried to suck up some planar coral and uh, got stuck.
Sebastian, what kind of corals are we looking at in this area? It seems to be primarily chrysogorgids, which are the ones that kind of look like bushes. Mm -hmm. um, I do see a bamboo whip right there. And I do see some polypogon sponges and what I believe to be a militaris right there. So militaris is a type of coral that has polyps that kind of are lined up like little soldiers, which is why I got the name militaris. Mm. Nice, thank you. Bridge now. Could we please do a ship move? 20 meters at bearing 130, 0 0.2 knots. Thank you. 
love going out up there and reading and looking at the blue, well, the bogey, boop, the, the birds that have blue, blue bee, booby, yeah, they have blue beaks. It's really cool. Yeah, I know it doesn't, it doesn't sound like that's what you're supposed to say, but that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, so there's red-footed and blue-footed boobies. Uh, yes, I've seen the red-footed. Yeah. But, yeah, first place would be my bed. Second place would be the monkey deck. Do you like looking at the stars, too, up there? Yes, yeah? I do. I do. I was, the first thing I thought it was my bed, too, and I was like, I'm not going to say that. Similar, I was like, I'm not going to say that. But also a great place on board. <laughs> yes. Sebastian? Hi everyone, I'm Sebastian Martinez. I am a data logger aboard the Nautilus. I'm also a undergraduate researcher at University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, in terms of my favorite place on deck, theoretically it should be the Nemo Lounge, but it is freezing in there. It's freezing in there. Um, yeah. So. I was gonna say that too, and I was like, I don't hang out in there because there's a, there's a new forward lounge for me, um, but it's it's just yeah, so air conditioned like my room. I can't hang out in there, I have to go outside. So, sorry, I interrupted yeah. you, continue. Um, runner up, probably um, the aft Zoom. lounge, because I like to see what's going on at the dives when I'm on my breaks. Oh yeah. Yeah, you guys are in there all the time. Eddie, go for Zoom. Yeah. Go on in. I'm also impressed that you're able to come up with a different question for us every single dive, every single watch. I was thinking the same thing. It's great. That one was on the spot. Mm -hmm. I like wake up and I think about it all morning. No, it's it's And amazing. then I unmute it and that one just came to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's It's been different every single watch. It's uh, very impressive. Looks like there's a shrimp um, inside of the sponge on the right. Just from the angle that I saw, but now I don't see it anymore. Cool. But. Now these look like sponges, like you could you could use those in the shower. Like they're big loofahs. Yeah, for sure. Most of the ones that we see, I'm just like, meh. Yeah, I can totally see. I'm wondering, these guys, it's really interesting to see these guys like three back to back to back like this. It's very interesting. I don't, I don't think I've seen that so far. Yeah, this one in the middle is probably not doing so great though. I know, I was thinking <laughs> That's why it's same small, because mm -hmm. it's Bridge blocked from the current from both sides. They're all in the same like orientation as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please do a move twenty meters at one three zero. Clearly it's the middle child. Thank mm. you. Yeah. <laughs> the forgotten one. <laughs> So Sebastian, the orientation of those sponges was interesting. Do they normally like leave that larger portion of their body like open to the current? Do yes, they do. Um, that's their preferred angle of filter feeding. They can minimally do it from the other directions, but they always put their preferred kind of opening for filter feeding towards the c most common direction of current mm -hmm. in their area. Yeah, and that, that opening is to increase surface area, right? Yes. Th I think the um, the ones like this, no. Um, the ones with the big bell shape, they, they do it much more effectively. These guys, I think, are typically a little bit more uh, bulk over effectiveness. Yeah. Well, they definitely got the bulk down. Hmm. We already said that this was coral, right? Um, that might be hydroid. Okay. Wow. This one's huge. Yeah, I can't get the whole thing in the still, still camera frame. Whoa. Kupai and Aha. Oh, I did. Yeah. Kupai and Aha. Aha. Wow, this is a cool area. 
For those at home who are wondering what is kupaya naha, it means like amazing, spectacular. Is that wow? Oh, I didn't even see that guy. Oh, wow. Good eye. Yeah. Trip. I've seen these guys on some of the other shifts, but not on ours. I have to look it up. Because I don't think it has a common name. Oh. Different than I've ever seen. It looks like it was sleeping. <laughs> that like guy was, oh, sorry. Polyclida homerion asper. Mm. Three three names. See how their arms are like to their sides. Mhm. Mm That's so interesting. Derek, do you have a favorite place on the ship? Uh, I concur with Malia. Uh, I really enjoy being up on the, the top deck of the ship that we're allowed to go on, which is the monkey deck. Um, so it's basically kind of a nice big square with some benches and uh, it's really nice wood planking and views 360 degrees around. And if you want to get wind in your hair, that's the place to go. Um, <laughs> just kind of stare out in front of the ocean. It's really nice, especially around the sunset and sunrise. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, the rest of my yeah. answer is, uh, my name is Derek Sowers. I work for Ocean Exploration Trust, um, helping to run mapping and navigation operations. And I'm based out of Durham, New Hampshire. My name's Jake Bonney. I'm the Hercules pilot on this watch. And at home, I'm a graduate student at the University of Rhode Island. I study ocean engineering. And I'd have to agree, my favorite place is definitely the monkey deck. And uh, I get up there at least once a day to read, or if it's calm enough, I will try and do a workout. But like Melinda said, it can be a little um, dicey at times. <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> it's definitely nice to be out in the sun and in the wind and uh, get those 360 degree views. Uh, good morning, uh, Tito Kalacious here, uh, Chief Pilot and Expedition Leader with the ROV Jason back at Woods Hole Oceanographic, uh, out here moonlighting my first cruise. My favorite place on the boat is wherever I sit to have breakfast, <laughs> especially during this watch. Awesome. That's a good answer. That might be my favorite that. answer so far. Do you ever eat anything before I watch Tito, or just like when we're I finished? try not to. I'm sticking to breakfast <laughs> and dinner. Yeah. You know. yeah, same. We, 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 can, we all try to limit our food intake, and it's really mostly a failure. <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of good food here at, at most times. I'm, I, I've been skipping lunch recently, but uh, always just kind of like, oh, what's that? The have out. There's a, another vessel that uh, Tito and I have worked on, and where we were working, the way the prevailing winds were, if you went out to watch sunrise on the main deck, you just happened to be by the main exhaust for the galley. Oh, So man, we used yeah. to call them the bacon sunrise. <laughs> so you got to watch the sun makes come the, up and the smell stomach bacon. Grumble a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, yeah, get your appetite that's, you, that's on the way to the van. You can always, there's a vent right here. Yeah, and you can yeah. See you're coming on to watch, you're like, oh man, I smelled dinner already. <laughs> and last but not least, Ed. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'm Ed McNichol, I'm Video Operations Manager for OET. I'm sailing as second video engineer, sitting over here controlling the camera and the audio and the recorders and the satellite feeds and the blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, I have a couple favorite places on the, the I have many. Um, one of them, strangely enough, is these control vans. Um, I worked with a team for about a year and a half to design and build these, and we're very proud of this project and how we kind of nailed it on the design criteria. So I do enjoy how well this space works for people and some of the innovations we put in, like the Telestrator. I mm -hmm. um, also enjoy my stateroom. Uh, I'm out here usually 160 to 180 days a year. 
So I kind of make that into my place of refuge. Uh, I have carpets in there, and I try and cover up anything that looks like the rest of the boat. So it's full of tapestries and color. Uh, and uh, I have uh, a pillowcase that my wife made me for going out to sea that's full of tropical fish and crabs and stuff. So it just feels different from the rest of the boat. But I also really appreciate any time I'm even just moving around or walking, uh, out of the house, the interior part of the boat, just because you can't help but be touched by where we are and uh, the beauty of the place. And sometimes it stops you in your tracks, especially when we come out of here and mm -hmm. the sun's coming up. Uh, it's just wherever you happen to be standing. And yeah, it's, it's one of the moment nice to appreciate. One of the nice things about this watch is that we, whenever we're off watch, it's either sunrise or sunset. It's cool. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. like, it, uh, it's always something great to look at on the horizon. I do like this watch. This and, and yeah, Ed, I'll, I'll second you on the control van. Like it's, uh, it, it's re you guys did a really nice job. It's it's uh, actually comfortable to be up here. The old ones were like just squeezed in like a tin can. Like I can actually lean back in my chair and not hit my head. Yeah, I, that I remember that as well. It was a few sets tiny. of control vans. And yeah, these are awesome. Yeah, yeah. this is it, it's, it's, it's so very and it's so functional. To yeah. To come up but we had a nice process and worked closely with a lot of partners yeah and got to work with some, uh, uh, Jim Newman who I really enjoy working oh with. that's great I'm glad he was involved yeah, yeah. I sailed with him uh, many times early in my sailing career stay very close contact with Jim so yeah that's good to hear dinner with him in March when we were at Rhode Island he uh, one time when we were uh, loading stuff on uh, the Rhode Island uh, ship Endeavor um, he took a boat over from his house in Woods Hole. Uh, Felicity? I'm not sure, yeah. but uh, he, he, sh he showed up and like was waving at everybody. And we're like, what are you doing? He's like, it's faster and way more, well, it's at least more direct to come by boat yeah. than by yeah. bridge. Felicity, um, which is a Tajmo, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's cool. He's like, okay, I just came to say hi. <laughs> and then he left. He's like, okay, that's great. I love uh, how some people name their vessels. I did some work with Walter Cronkite's son. Walter Cronkite was the anchor man for the CBS Evening News. I believe he had a 40-foot yawl, did he not? Uh, I don't remember, but towards the end of his career, as they started to hand it off to his replacement named Dan Rather, it was a CBS Evening News with Walter Cronkite. That was the name of the program. And they called him the most trusted man in America. And it would start, and there instead would be Dan Rather, and Dan would say, I'm sitting in for Walter, who's on assignment tonight. And in talking to Walter's son, he mentioned that his dad's boat was named Assignment. <laughs> that is I thought that brilliant. Was clever. He's on assignment. <laughs> He's not lying. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was like, you know, so in funny. the jungles of Africa. But yeah. now he's having a gin and tonic That's on great. the Chesapeake Bay. Is this a bamboo coral? It is. It's very primnoid like but it's a bamboo coral. Yeah, I see it in my still camera. I see the little also bands. super hard to focus on. Go for zoom if you like. That's fine. Those of you that try to work out on the monkey deck, there's another vessel I go on. It's almost twice the height of uh, this one. Uh, actually, Jake, we saw it when we were up in Canada, the uh, Canadian Coast Guard ship Tully. And I sailed once, and there was a cadet on there who used to go up on their monkey deck, which is way up there, and hula hoop. Hula hoop? Yeah, for a workout. And it, just standing up there was a workout, but trying to do that at the same time. <laughs> She's a collapsible hula hoop. Oh my gosh. I've seen those before. My roommate, my freshman year of college, had one. Yeah. And it, I wouldn't see it, and then it would come out, and I'd be like, where'd this come from? Yeah, it, it was, I mean, she would be up there for a while. It was uh, it, 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 probably a pretty good it, core it, workout. If we had hula hoops, I think, <laughs> we had hula hoops, I think Malia would have fallen overboard. <laughs> <laughs> you know they have ones with lights now? With like lights. Very cool oh. lights, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's for the rave crowd. Yeah. It's funny, too, oh. the, um, the technology and the tools that we use for, like, designing these vans, we 
used to do physical mock-ups to do line of sight surveys to know what you could see and what you couldn't merge. Um, but now we use, uh, you know, software programs to do the, we just put in the AutoCAD drawing and it can show us all of that. Yeah. It's like the uh, home inspectors now, they just use like drones oh, and, yeah. and 3D modeling. They don't really, yeah, poke, roofing they don't, have, they don't get too. up on your roof anymore. Yeah, much safer that way. Bridge nav. Please do two zero meters at bearing two zero zero. Thank you. I can't believe we're at wave point eight. Well, approaching wave point eight. <laughs> I like the bridge also. We, we have I, thirteen um, though. When I sail as lead uh, video engineer, uh, you're always on call. You're on radio twenty four hours a day. Um, but the bridge is kind of a place. No one's run out there looking for you, and you get to talk to our professional mates. It's just a relaxing place. Whoa. Mike, have you been down to the engine room? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, you should see it. Oh, yeah, man. I do. Yeah, I should. I also need to see the wind room still. Um, oh. Yeah, if, uh, if nothing else on the, if you go on the bridge, on the starboard side of the bridge, they have a monitor, they have like eight uh, CCTV cameras down there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, when you go into the engine room and you go down the two decks to where the uh, Thor was, the previous engine, yeah. you could easily park a Mini Cooper down there. That's now. the most spacious <laughs> room on the ship. Yeah. And it... it you could reach the top of the engine, I think, with your hand. You, you don't need ladders or any of that. It's much, 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 much smaller. That's good. What are we going to do with that extra space? Make another bunk? They have a badminton uh, <laughs> court down there. Do they really? No. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> It'd be very hot, yeah, and yeah. loud. Though, honestly, I, I can't sleep in most places. Maybe not consistently. Do you like that your room is cold? Or would you no. prefer it now? <laughs> oh. I mean, like, I like sleeping when it's cold, like under the covers and stuff, but this is, this is a little too far. Is that far up forward? Right yeah. Yeah, we just did some work up there. Some of the venting was not properly attached, so I think you can actually adjust that somehow now. Well, if you could find out how, that would be great. <laughs> uh, ask um, Diego. I think he was driving that program, our ETO. Oh. Yeah, they uh, they definitely fixed that because it is. I think all of it's venting into yeah, those two rooms. Yeah, it used to be uh, very. No, it's another urchin. No, I can't. Tell. I don't think so. Uh, it was quite warm up there. Ah. I haven't really seen any distinct lava flows. All I'm seeing is just broken rock fragments. I think we will once we get up onto this hump. There's probably just a lot of like down slope yeah. slumping. I love when we look when we view it from so far away. Huh? I love like when we're so far away from the the well the oh so you can see more yes yeah and you get a yeah, reference I like size for I like to go up and down to give perspective and yeah yes and, and then go close to see the you know the biology that you wouldn't normally see. Mm -hmm. So 
something we have the freedom to do on an exploration dive. Like Holothorian. Bridge nav. Uh, ship move to 20 meters at 230. Does this look like a flow coming up, Hannah? Like on the right? Yeah. Now? Kind of. Again, it's just kind of hard for me to confirm that because it's kind of close. It almost looks like a brick. So what is this sponge species called again? Called this, again? Is ca oh. yeah. this is called uh, polypogon. Polypogon. Well, that sounds like a Pokemon. I was yes. going to say it sounds like a Cyclops name. Very Odyssey. interesting base. I think Polyphemus was the Cyclops. Yeah, those are mostly um, glass, pretty much like strands and threads yeah. that yeah. hold it down to it's the really seafloor. Cool. Whoa, I see it. Because in high current, that's uh, got to uh, incur a large amount of push. Yeah, push. yeah going in. I, um, yeah, that's cool. Wow. Kupai and Naha. Whoa. Yeah, sp sponges typically have two methodologies of attaching themselves to the seafloor. They often use these hair-like glass, or they use a normal kind of like stem-like base that glues them to the seafloor. And often th those are used as differentiating factors and identifying different species. Did sound like a Pokemon name too. I do appreciate that whoever names Pokemons puts uh, Latin root clues in there. Because for some reason kids always like to say, do you know what type of Pokemon a blah 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 Charizard is? I don't char. Sounds like charred. I'm guessing fire type. I feel like this is a low bait flow. From what I see, I agree. Yes, thank you. Reassurance. <laughs> yeah, very battery idle. Oh, it's too early in the morning for this. Incorrect. Oh, it looks battery idle right there. Those little round dots. Little red dots. Brown dots. Brown. Oh, oh. I think that's just loose gravel. Yes. Whoa. Is that a really tall glass sponge? Um, they would be. Um, fortunately, those guys are uh, missing their heads. I think this is probably about our 11th dive of this expedition. Is that it? Which wow. doesn't seem like a large number, but you think about all the knowledge and data that's been gathered so far, and it's still yet to come. Yeah. It's so much. Well, and every, um, every dive has been about 24 hours, so it is a lot of time in the water. And we have a lot of transit because nothing's close out here. 
How do we know how far away our next transit is? Or no? It's twelve hours. Twelve hours. Do we normally do like the same amount of time with more dies on a typical leg, or would you say that this is still a typical amount this of dies for a leg? This is unusual. It would, more normal would be for us to be in the water for 18 to 36 hours, um, and then we uh, recover, and four hours later we go back in. Yeah, okay, we, so, we so need a four-hour turnaround time so that the, the ROV guys can uh, do their post-dive checklist and then pre-dive checklist, make sure everything's good before we put it back over the side. Also, so the science can process the samples that they do, we collect. Yeah. But that's usually only four hours. And then, yeah. Uh, so would you say we do like significantly more dives on a typical leg then? A uh, number of dives. Hmm. Yeah, it really depends on like where we are, what the depth is, and yeah. uh, what the bathymetry is. Because if it's not very different, we don't. The dives are shorter. And what the mission is. Um. What is that brittle star doing? I know. It it's looks doing like yoga. Yoga. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've been on several legs where it's shallower dives and oh, yeah. shorter dives. So it's like eight hours or so, and then four hours turnaround, jump to the next site, eight hours, eight hours in the water, and then four hours on deck, and then. If you get into that rhythm, you can end up not being in the van because it's it l aligns perfectly with your watch and your you're the pit crew changing mm -hmm. out the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. Bridge nav. Bridge nav. I did a leg on another vessel once. Now we were working in inland waters, so a thousand meters or much, 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 much less, like 140 meters, and we did I think it was 43 dives in a week. Oof. Oh my God! And we only work daytime hours. We didn't work at night. Jeez, that sounds so intense. But some of those dives where you would like just take something to the sea floor, put it down, and then come back. Yeah. Obviously, you weren't doing the four-hour turnaround. Uh, no, we would. <laughs> we would pre-dive the ROV in the morning. <laughs> and then yeah, that makes sense. Go 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 go. Yeah. Well, okay. there's also ROVs that, uh, you, you know, I, I worked with one off uh, off a different vessel a couple of years ago that, you know, they have one of those uh, TMUs. Is it TMU? TMS. TMS. Um, you know, and they just, they'll just bring it up, put something new, you know, and drop it back in. They, you know, yeah. they, they're, they're not doing this. The um, It's not as much of a process, the launch and recovery, as what we do. It's not a two-vehicle system, so it's uh, it's just much more consolidated, and they just, they just lower is, it all the time. Uh, using that tether management system or sometimes a cage. Right. So there, there's still something to decouple the ROV from but the motion of the vessel. Yeah, the but surface. they're not launching two vehicles from no, the deck. I no, mean. it's one thing going over the side. So, pilots, right now we're just tracking a line at 180 degrees. Right. That's directly towards waypoint 8. Okay. And some solutions are just pure single body systems. So, uh, they use a catenary in the 6-8 line through the application of floats when they launch to uh, make sure they don't get yanked around from the boat. And that gives them a lift-through hold capability as well. Uh, uh, the Canadian RV Ropos does that. Um, the uh, Wood Solar Oceanographic Institution RV Jason that Tito works as an expedition leader for is unique in that it can be configured in either two-body or single-body mode, uh, depending on the mission constraints. I think that that's a not like just flip a switch. I think they usually go to see the whole time so one mode. Different cranes, different yeah. LARs, uh, pretty significant difference. Yeah. yeah. And the LARs is the launch and recovery system that they use to do you guys still have that blue crane, or is that gone? 
Uh, we have two blue cranes. We've uh -huh. got the uh, NPC, or North Pacific crane, and then we also have Effer, uh, which is an Italian crane for two body systems. Uh -huh. But it's also two different cables. We use a 842 cable for single body for heavy lifts, and we use a 68 for two body, just like Can we actually here. get a zoom on this bush with this, this, this SAR? Like the red one? Yes, please. Is that a sponge? Um, the red? Yeah. No, that's definitely a coral. Oh, I thought you said zoom on the sponge. I know, I heard sponge too. <laughs> did I say sponge? Yeah, yeah, you did. Oh, my bad. It's still the morning. Yeah, yeah, no, you're good. Just, just confirming. Oh, and... No zoom? Nope. Partial. Dark red, Chrysler Gorge, or yeah, orange. Looks like there's a little jelly on there. Or yeah, what is that? Egg case? It might be an egg case. Oh, uh, Saka says this is a Rondra Gorgia. Rond Rondan Iridagorgia. Rondan Iridagorgia. Hole in the mesm, and Pretty. coming out. Thanks, Tree. Charlie Brown Christmas tree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Big guy. Wow. Moose handler. Yeah, it does. The rock has a handler. That one's a slipper on the right. <laughs> <laughs> Hotel slipper. It wouldn't exactly be a comfy slipper. No. It should be a uh, tie dye croc instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tito, is that, uh, does all of that fit into like a one or two containers? Oh, no. No. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, well, I, I think we can squeeze the whole thing into uh, Starboard Sea. Seven, uh, you know, seven? 50 foot trucks. Wow. We have uh, five vans, two control vans, uh, one tool van, which is our workshop. We have a rigging van, which contains most of our spares. And then we have another one that carries Jason and Medea. But we have um, one truck dedicated for just the winch, another for the peripherals of the winch, another for the winch van. Uh, and then the crane itself goes on its own truck with the uh, hydraulic power unit. So I think it's a total of seven trucks these days. All I can think wow. of is Autobots roll out. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it's, a it's insane how much work a, a, a single body mold is. We do there's it a ROV days. workshops, uh, but that's a different arrangement. So Jason works on vessels of convenience. It's not attached to a single vessel. It doesn't sound very convenient. Um, there, there's times <laughs> when we'll mold onto five did well do five separate modes. We may be getting back and forth on the same ship, but can we get a zoom on that little white object sticking out from the bottom of the overhang right there? To the right? Okay. Yeah, but she just circled. It's almost like a moving carnival. Uh, well, we've been called the <laughs> deep sea carnies. <laughs> that looks to be a sponge behind us that looks Ten percent of the vehicle is so big. I'm seeing that on the. Oh. Yeah. All right, go for zoom. Gun in. Just pull it up. Try make it quick. Oh yeah. A little closer. That's just huge. Huh. Yeah, straight back behind her. The stuff around it clearly look like hydroids, but I can't get a good look at what that is. It looks like it might be like a what's left over a there. barnacle shell. Out. A stock barnacle. That's from the chat? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I I appreciate it when you guys read the chat comments because I can't see or hear what the online scientists are just thinking. Mm. It's really nice. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, we've got some good uh <laughs> Yeah, we've got some great experts uh who are tuning in uh all, feels like all the time, which is just, just so great um, that they're so invested and helpful. 
Do you um, want to do a quick 180 and look at that sponge pilot that Tito was mentioning? What? I don't know if you have time, but I'm just... Oh, yeah. Make it quick. Oh, wow. Whoa. Wow. Kupai and Naha. So, is this all the same species we think? This, this yeah, it looks all like polypogon to me. Quick zoom. Go on in. Oh wait, Asako, is it polio pogon? Have we been saying it wrong this entire time? That is great, isn't it? Thanks. Yep. Mm -hmm. Seems to do that about this point in the dive. <laughs> <laughs> it always throws me for a loop. Oh, it is polio pogon. Okay. Thank you, Asako. We were, uh, when we were working at Bikini last month, we, uh, one of the su submarine wrecks is called the Apagon, USS Apagon, and uh, the, the, the British and Australian uh, s scientists who I was working with, they could not get the pronunciation, like, in their head, they were, like, saying, like, Apogen and Apogen, and I'm just like, no, Apagon. <laughs> like, Can we get a zoom on this fan, please? It was just uh, funny to hear all the different versions of that word. The pulley ap opo gone made me think of that. It's so pretty. Very pretty. Shrimp. Oh, there's a bunch there's of shrimp bamboo. around it. Yeah. Mm. Bamboo. They're fan. so tiny. Right. Uh, there's lasers, but you can't see them. Oh, there they are. Uh, I don't want to have to rush yeah, it. Can we catch up? Yeah. 